Welcome to class three of the visual effects course. And in this lesson, we're going to take uh, some footage of a lady who happens to be on a green screen. We're going to get rid of that green screen and replace the background. And this kind of shot is something that happens all the time. For whatever reason, the actress actor can't be against the background that they happen to be. Maybe the location doesn't allow it. Uh, maybe it's dangerous, uh, but whatever those reasons are, they often get filmed in a studio and then later on the two have to match. So the big thing that happens here to make this all work is color correction. Color correction really helps to bring these two elements together and make them look like they belong in the same scene. So let's have a quick look at what we've got here. So I found this nice footage of a lady who's pulling all different kinds of expressions and we're going to use the one of her smiling because that just happens to work quite nicely. And then we've got this beautiful lake in the background and we can see that clearly this lake is definitely not like a studio. The, the color of that is very different. So we have to match some of the darker elements and the lighter elements to sort of match this screen that we've got here. And this is generally quite a difficult thing to do. Once again, we're going to use um, free footage. So the lake in the morning comes from Vidivo. We can give you the link for that. And the other image, which I don't seem to have up on my screen right now, uh, I was probably looking for the lake sunrise. Uh, the other footage comes from Pexels. So uh, between the two of those, we've got them uh, covered. So let's close this down and let's bring that footage in to After Effects, ready for us to start working with. So let's start off with the lake in the morning and we'll drag that down onto the new composition. So we get that down there, the new composition. That's all looking good. We're gonna put now the video over the top of that. So let's bring that in over the top and we can see there that is and we are going to just oops just, I'm just going to drag it this way see there she's being sad and eventually you come across one where there we go we're getting to it now where she starts to be um, here there we go burst into a kind of smart spring a bit more that way there Okay, that's sort of good, I like that. Let's just reduce the composition down, so composition settings. Let's make it five seconds instead of six and we can just knock off some at the end of that. There we go, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Okay, so uh, video, let's go to keying because we want to key out the, um, the green, key light 1.2. Let's click on here. And immediately we kind of get a good result, but it's not quite the right result. If I just bring this along a little bit, you can see there's all this kind of noise over here and it is a little bit annoying. So the way we get rid of that is the screen gain. So just down toward the screen gain and we're just gonna move this along a little bit. And like 104 should just about do, if we look over there, I am now seeing that there is, in fact, we might even be able to go back one more, like to 103. Yeah, we can see that we've brought the screen gain up and we've got rid of a lot of that noise that's there. I think there is a little bit of noise, but I think it's it's not looking unnatural. And that's the main thing. So that's good. We've got that in place. Now we have to move into the more complex part of this. And when I'm not just looking for the exact settings, which I've got written down from previously, this is the part that takes a very long time because you really are analyzing the color that you're seeing in the background and the color you're seeing in the foreground to make the two match. So I'm gonna say, if you really wanna challenge yourself, how about getting a different background uh, footage, putting it in there and seeing if you can match the color yourself because that's where your eye uh, really kind of comes into this and it's all really in looking and trying to figure it out. So we're gonna go for another effect and this time I'm gonna go for color correction and we're gonna go for something called Lumetri Color, which is one of the newer um, settings that we've got in um, After Effects. So let's go and hit basic color correction and we're gonna look at something first of all called an input LUT, LUT standing for lookup table. And I'm gonna go down here and these are all like different kind of camera settings. Um, and I'm gonna go for a D21. And it's way too much at the moment, but it's okay. We're gonna make it kind of fit just right. I kind of like where this lands us on here. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. So I know I'm gonna knock the temperature up of this a little bit but I'm going to start reducing down some of the things that make it quite strong. And the things that make it strong are things like the contrast and the highlights and the saturation, which we can all see down here. Um, so let's bring back the contrast a little bit and I'm going to go down 
quite substantial with this and we'll see how it helps us to land in the right place. I'm going to go to about minus 40 I think for that. Highlights are going to bring right down because uh, the if you look where it was to start off with there's quite a lot of like these highlights on the face which clearly just say to me that is a studio and uh, we need rid of the studio looking light. So I'm going to go right the way down to like minus 110 for that. Almost 110. That'll do 109. Close enough. Um, I'm probably just going to leave the shadows, whites and blacks where they are for now because I'm going to do something quite creative with that later on because I want to change those colors in the shadows and I want to change the colors in the highlights later on. So let's look at the, uh, the saturation. The saturation of this it isn't quite the right saturation. We can see there the background is very desaturated. And this is quite saturated. So we don't need to bring this down a lot. I'm going to take it down to something like 75. And already you can see that it's a very desaturated look. But it's still not quite right. The color that she is here is not the highlight colors that we're seeing here. Like we can see this highlight on her face is not this color here. The shadows that we see here and not the shadows that we're seeing back here. So we're going to go down a little bit and we can see that we've got this option here um, for color wheels. So let's go into the color wheels and I'm not going to do anything at all with the midtones, but I'm going to play around with the shadows and I'm going to play around with the highlights. So if we look at the shadows, I think my shadows are all kind of a sort of purplish color. So if I just click once inside there, I can actually see properly my full um, sort of color wheel and what I'm going to do is it's not a click and drag you just click where you want it to go so obviously I don't want it to be like a really strong color like that that's ridiculous obviously so I'm looking for just a tint of that slight purple that we're seeing there to be present in these shadows that we've got here and again like if I if I wanted to increase that I could kind of move this up a little bit so we get it a little lighter or I can bring it back and make it darker but I obviously don't want to make it darker so I'm going to leave it kind of there about the middle where it was. In fact, I'm going to actually undo that to where it was. So just clicking in there, you can kind of play around with the color of where you think it should be. Again, for the highlights, what I'm thinking with the highlights is I really don't want that to be white. I really want to try and move towards something else over here. So I'm thinking again towards this kind of orangey color that we've seen on over this side. So if I click over here, still a little bit white, but overall, the sort of color of a face is now beginning to match the colors that we're seeing here. And I think with that alone, we've kind of got it. So that's been kind of nice. Let's just play that a little bit just to check. Yeah, it seems to be sort of working okay. You can fine tune that a little bit more if you want to, but I think that's working out pretty good. So what we're really looking for there, just to recap, is not making it look like it's filmed in two different places but to fool the mind into thinking this all was filmed at the same time and that's the the real trick in all of this so what i'm going to do is just quickly show you one other setting underneath here which is the creative setting and there's a look here which is a bit like these lookup tables and i did go through these to start off with and i couldn't find anything i like there's lots of things here that have already been kind of created again there's looks that are like various cameras so if you did know the camera that's filmed on you could kind of try and go for it a little bit but there's also other stuff down here like I couldn't find like it's not really blue but these kind of give you blue blue moon intense ice which are kind of nice there's also some stuff down here like oh, kind of orange crush but again that's not really what we're looking for iron neutral noir and all this kind of thing which which kind of works out nice but it's not amazing if you go for blue moon you can see it tries to make it go blue we've obviously changed it a fair bit since then so it's not going to be like that so let's go back to non um because we, we've sort of got that ready but the the creative is kind of nice as well so it's worth looking in there if ever you try to do color correction as is the curves the curves can really help you out a lot in here as well because you can play with the curves a fair bit on the with the hue saturation as well on here so those are kind of nice as well so there's lots of things there to play around with and eventually get a nice kind of color but that's us done for this week so again save that and export it in exactly the same way we have done it previously where we get the composition and we choose add to adobe media encoder queue export it out using the settings and that's us done for another week on that hi everyone thanks for watching 
Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange. And click the link on the screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.